Hi, my name is Zacharis, and like many of you, I love the idea of exploring distant alien worlds. But unfortunately, we can't really do that in the literal sense, so we must turn to the next best thing, which is exploring them in our imaginations through science fiction and speculative planet building. But crafting scientifically accurate worlds can be a difficult task. I mean, it is astrophysics after all. And the usual sci-fi strategy of assigning random values to a planet's parameters is not a good workaround. So in this series of videos, I'm going to use my background in planetary science to help you build the most realistic planetary systems possible. Well, practical. But before we get to all that, there are a few things I'd like to go over with you so that we're all on the same page and I don't have to repeat myself in every video. First, what are you going to need to follow along with this series? The main thing that you're going to need is a scientific calculator. Fortunately, these are easy to come by. Most phones have a calculator app that can be placed into scientific mode in its settings or sometimes by simply rotating the phone into landscape mode. The same is true for most desktop and laptop operating systems too. Except for that last part, don't rotate your PC. Alternatively, you can simply open your internet browser on whatever device you're most comfortable using, go to Google and search Scientific Calculator, which will provide you with an in-browser scientific calculator. I will be using this one throughout this tutorial series as it is easy to use, has all the features that we're going to need, and is available to any browser on any operating system. On the subject of calculations, we are going to be using quite a bit of math over the course of this series. And I know that many of you consider yourselves to be bad at math and that physics equations like this can appear very confusing and intimidating. But I don't want you to worry about this. I know that you can do it. I'm going to walk you through each equation step by step explaining what each term means and how to properly enter it into the calculator. On some of the larger, more complicated equations, I'll try to split them up into several smaller and much simpler steps so that it doesn't get too complicated or overwhelming. I promise that you'll never have to derive an equation or be left to figure out an equation on your own. Furthermore, I'm going to be building a planetary system along with you, so you'll get to see exactly how I enter numbers into the calculator, what kind of values I get out, and how to record the results. The only math skill that you're going to need for this series is the ability to read and write scientific notation. If you're not familiar with scientific notation, I have created a short video that will teach you everything that you're going to need. You can find a link to that in the description of this video and maybe even a card at the top of the screen if I can figure out how to do that. And lastly, on the subject of math, let's talk about units. Throughout this tutorial series, I'll be exclusively using SI units. If you're not familiar with SI units, they are a version of the metric system that is used for scientific endeavors the world over. Indeed, SI stands for Système International. It was named by the French, but you get it. The benefits of using this system are that, being metric, it's a base 10 system, which makes calculations and conversions a lot easier. And because it's the standard in physics, most of the equations that you encounter in textbooks, in scientific papers, and even on the web are written in SI units natively. In fact, this is where a lot of world builders run into problems. They come across a physics equation that they need, they don't know the proper units to use, so they use the ones they're most familiar with, and the equation spits out an incorrect or nonsensical result. We're going to avoid that. Now, I know that the majority of you watching this are in the US or the UK and are most comfortable and accustomed to using imperial units. That is, feet, miles, pounds, Fahrenheit, etc. And that's fine. In the end, you are welcome to use whatever units you want to represent your planetary system. However, I strongly recommend that you follow along with this tutorial series using SI units. Then, once all of the parameters are defined and all the calculations have been made, you can go back over everything you've got and convert it to whatever units you would like. But if you try to use imperial units as you're working your way through this series, you're going to make things a lot more complicated and confusing for yourself and greatly increase the chances of making mistakes that will negatively impact the realism of your planetary system. Don't worry if you're not familiar with SI units right now, I will be explaining them as we go along. Over the course of this series, I'm going to be showing you how to define and calculate a lot of parameters for your celestial objects. But you may not need nor want that much detail in your project. So I will be dividing all of the parameters up into three tiers based on their importance to your planetary system's realism, so that you can easily determine which parameters you will need to deal with. 
The top tier is the critical parameters. These are absolutely mandatory. If you do not have all of these parameters defined completely and correctly, some aspect of your planetary system will be scientifically inaccurate. Fortunately, there aren't as many of these parameters as you might assume. The tier below this is the important parameters. These are very useful parameters to have and make your planetary system appear complete and well thought out. But they are not strictly necessary. If you're having trouble with some of these parameters or you just don't want to bother with them, then you don't have to. The bottom tier is the optional parameters. These can add some fun extra details to the objects of your planetary system, but if you choose not to include them, no one will miss them. Finally, the only way that I can make this tutorial series is to start at the beginning with a star and then build the system up from there, defining the parameters in each step that are not only relevant to the current video, but are going to be needed in subsequent videos. But I know that most of you are not coming to this tutorial with a clean slate, ready to start a brand new planetary system. Instead, you probably already have a planet or planetary system that you have been working on for some time and are just looking to check its accuracy or fill in some missing details. And you might be able to use this tutorial to do that, but it's not optimized for that. So it could help or it could cause problems for you. My recommendation to you would be to set aside your existing project so that it doesn't get messed up and use it as a reference while following along with this tutorial series in order to build a new system that will hopefully closely resemble it, but will identify and correct any inaccuracies as we go along. Okay, so that about covers it. I hope you're as excited about this series as I am. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. The first video in this series is up now and can be found right here somewhere. And this first video doesn't even have any math in it, so you're all set. Just click right there or somewhere over there. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just waiting for you to click. Click the link and go to the next video. Just right there.